Well, I'd like to thank Luca Dury and Simone Mandary uh, for the opportunity to present the NST. Uh, so today we're going to talk about these uh, topics. And uh, I'll go a little bit over what NST is for those who are not familiar with it. I'd like to first show you by example some of the uh, products that can be produced by interrogating an actual NTOP NG um, process running. And then I'd like to show you the behind the scenes, uh, how you, the, some of the command line usage of the API and how we can get both host and flow stats. Uh, and a very important piece that's always the starting point is how do you do network visibility? So where do you attach in the network in order for you to actually get the data of the traffic and then you can ingest it into NTOPNG and then uh, getting it out of NTOPNG. Uh, we'll look at also the usage of how I've uh, integrated NTOPNG. And then we'll look at both host and flow geolocation demonstration. And then another hidden gem that I love is the NDPI reader. It's a utility. Uh, and I'll show you how I've used that also in, to integrate into uh, NST. And then if we're time afterwards, we'll do some questions and answers. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let me start with NST. You've there's a lot of different security distributions. Uh, NST is, I've been doing this since 2003. Uh, and when I get ideas or when some of my work, I try to integrate it into the, into the distribution. Um, I would say the biggest difference between like a Kaylee Linux, which I'm sure, or Backtrack it used to be called, is that I've taken a different approach. And that is I put a web user interface in front of all the major network uh, open source tools, Wireshark, NTOP, uh, NMAP, all the big ones, and have a common interface so that I believe when you're solving network problems or you want to actually use, do diagnostics on your environment, that it's good to have an integration of all these tools. And so you'll see a common theme and thread of using NST. So what you're looking at right now on running Chrome. And this is the web user interface into a running instance of uh, NST. So let me show you by example some of the work that I've done integrating uh, NTOP NG. So practice what you preach. So I'm going to go to our wiki site. And right here, I'm going to zoom in on this. I have, have an instance of NTOP NG running between um, the my wiki site and the internet and this is typically this is a one 24-hour period and you're seeing over the last uh, number of hosts so all these little blue dots with the white in these are all users that are hitting on the wiki so you've seen this before on many sites of people coming in but what I've done here is I have a network tap between the uh, the website and then I feed that into NTOPNG and then I'm extracting the host data. So there's an example of a product that you can use, get from uh, using NST. So let me uh, back out of this and this. Now there's different ways that you can look at data and I'm always looking at different ways to present it. And here's a different one that here's a using a WebGL, a multi-series data set that I'm going to bring in here. And I'll zoom in on this. And what you're seeing is the bigger the spike, the more data. So just a different way of presenting. And then in this multi-series data acquisition, these are different hours of the day that you can, so I can go to a different one and see it. And there's different views that you can say it. So there's, the value of this was just another way to present data. There's no real qualitative other than it looks pretty and you can, if you have a, a nice GPU on your, on your system, it's a nice way of presenting. So you can see all the different users that are, that are hitting on my website. Here's India, Asia, China. 
So I was just going to show you that. We'll close that. OK, so let me go here to our, the agenda here next. And what we're going to present to you is, oh, there's one more I wanted to show you on that. Hold on just a second. I want to show you another presentation of that. That would be KLM. So I'm going to download an instance. I also produce KLM, which is for, I'm going to keep this, keep it. OK, so let's go over here and just look at this. So I've just downloaded this. Same thing, I'll bring up Google Earth that can produce. And so that same running NTOP NG, I showed you, uh, I showed you the data via a Mercator map. And then I'm going to show you the data using KLM. So this is all these presentations are easy to do. It's just a one button click. So this is a period of time for 24 hours and I'm using a version of, uh, 2009, 12, so 2020. So this is a very recent version of NTOP NG 4.1. And if you go to any one of the uh, buttons here, you can see the data that. So this was how many TCP packets, how many UDP packets. So here it was now and starting to get more than just host data. I'm actually looking at some of the characteristics for those hosts of what type of uh, traffics and the geolocation. So that's a that's a KLM. So we'll put that away for now. Don't save. So the next part of the what I want to show you here is a talk to you a little bit about the network visibility of how I believe one should uh, properly Let me get to this one right here. How you can actually see the where you want to actually do your data acquisition from in terms of the network. I'm going to present to you today is between so I'm at my house and I have a, um, uh, a cable. Actually, I have a fi fiber modem, so it's uh, not this particular one, but I have a actual tap between the dirty side of the firewall and the internet going to an NST box. So it's very important when you go to actually look at the network that you've got to make sure you're, what type of traffic that you actually want to uh, see. So in this case here, I want to see all traffic and then I can filter later on. Okay, so that's an important piece. So let me go here, bring up something I want to talk about. Shift G. Okay, so I have a running instance of NTOP NG on my system. And it's running on port right here. I'm going to highlight this 3001, and there's an NTOP NG running. Okay, so I just wanted to, and I'll show you how this is started through the WUI, but I just wanted to. Of the web user interface, I just wanted to present to you that this is a running instance. Okay. And the next thing I want to talk to you is about this how on your system, the location for, let me see, do this, where the actual REST API for NTOP NG lives. So in my case, is you have a starting point. Your parent directory is in user share NTOP NG. And then under scripts Lua, there's a REST uh, directory. And then this is a current version one. And in terms of this, we're going to be getting, not setting. And then we're going to be in your host. So in this directory, you're going to see various Lua scripts. So the one that I worked with Simon, uh, Simone on was this, uh, was the custom data Lua one. I also have NST specific ones because I have specific needs that makes it easier for uh, NTOP NG to run. So also here, we there's documentation that lives 
on the NTOP NG site for the RESTful API. And you can see that particular script right here, examples of how you use that, and that's presented. So you can always go to the online docs at NTOP NG to see that. So in my first example, I'm going to show you how to extract host data for a specific host. Let me show you the command. So how one interacts with the uh, NTOP NG through the API is on using curl. Okay. And since I have a, um, I'm using an HTTPS interface, I'd also want to make it, it's a self-signed certificate. So I want to do insecure that gets rid of the warning that it's self-signed. You have the content type, which I'm going to be extracting is JSON. Then you have your cookie where I'm going to be actually setting my uh, privilege in terms of user ID and password. So I have a temporary password and admin is the user. And then here is where you start your definition of what you want to extract. And in my case here, you have to have an interface. I have multiple interfaces, so I'm picking the interface zero ID. And then I want a parameter that says I want to use extract just host this particular IP. It's on my network, local network. Then you have to put in the actual script name. So you can see I'm going to be using the custom script. And you saw where the I showed you the help for that. And then I'm going to a uh, command line JSON uh, parser called JQ. So now I'm going to hit this. And when I do that, you'll see it comes out. If people are familiar with JSON, this is all the data for that one particular host uh, for 10, 22, 22, 10. And you can see this, what's the current throughput, the sizes, all the different information that you could extract about a host running on that has been detected and discovered by NTOP NG. Okay, and then you can see the line rates, and now you start to see some of the deep packet inspection with the NDPI. You have HTTP, SSH, Google, and so that's very useful for programming point of view from an external, uh, especially web based, because if you have it in JSON, it's a very common. Uh, format in which you can then extract information and then display it in whatever your uh, type of work you're doing. And also, there's also output that's external to the uh, to the host information, so you know if you were successful in your request. You can have it as string format, or you can have it as a format, a numeric format. So there's an example of how you get data. And let's do the next one. Just to show you, I'll do this, this the same example, but we'll put it to, uh, in Unix, we'll put it to a word count. So you can see that there's 500 actual lines of information for one. So there's quite a bit of data on a one particular host. So now let's extract. Here's what we'll do is the same thing, only we're going to now Let's not put the condition of a host. Let's do all hosts. So bang, you did that. And uh, if I go now to word count again, there's 28,000 lines. So there's quite a different uh, number of pieces of information, a lot of information that NTOP NG stores on, on all of its hosts. So, the next one I want to show you is, OK, now we have all this information. Well, how about we want to do a specific, a specific um, field? This, this one here. And now this specific field, we put a new attribute called field alias. And we're going to just take all the hosts, and I want to just show you just the IP. <laughs> IPs that are associated with all those hosts. And so now I extract it out, and you can see we have both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Okay, and that was done on interface zero. 
on interface one, which is the public side, that one. These are all the IP addresses that I am extracting that NTAP NG has visibility to on the uh, public side or the dirty side of my uh, firewall. Okay, so let's add another another field or another uh, <coughs> that I want to extract. In this case here, let's get IP address for interface zero and all the TCP bytes that are sent. So we'll have now two. So in this case now, you can see how you can start to extract different information. So one of the things I worked with Simone, it was for just to, for uh, making it maybe a little bit uh, less wordy by having, I want to change the names of some of the actual key names for the, uh, for my request. And in this case, let's do another example. What I'm going to do here is in the field alias, we have the ability now to translate the name. So I'm going to take that TCP byte sent and make it TCP with a B and an S. Okay. So in your output, you can change the actual field name or the key value name uh, to whatever you would like. So there's not much on the local, but if I do it on the uh, public one, you'll see more information or more values one. And these are the actual TCP bytes sent for each one of these uh, public addresses from my house where I'm connected to the internet right now. And then the last one I want to show on the host acquisition is right here. This is a custom uh, Lewis script that supports NST. It makes it a little easier for NST, but it's using all the fundamental API calls. Uh, and I chose to uh, do that just to make it easier on uh, both the front end and the and the back end, or I should say front end. And in this case, oh, let me go back to the command. What I did is I only care about just the IP addresses. So for interface zero and one, okay, I'm gonna do it again. This is all the host information. So you saw the actual uh, first product I had was a Mercator map where I showed you the blue dots on that. Well, now I have all the IP addresses that are at least in my house that on both the public and the and the private side. So the uh, 10 network is my network in my house. And then I also am looking at the public so I can get the combination or the combined and also the IP6. And why it's in this order is because I did a sort unique. Okay, so that's why it's in that order. So now what the next thing I'm going to do is move on to flow data. So we just went over, that's how you can extract different pieces of host information. Now let's take a look at the flow. And if you look at the directory where this one is, cd space dot dot slash flow, you have the active Lua. That's how you would interface with that. And once again, that's a, this is described in the documentation on the online uh, NTOP NG site. And I have a custom one here. So let's take a look at the information that you get for flow data. And so if with flow data, we start this, this, you'll have a client and a server. So let me go to the top here. And you'll see what, how I'm handling this. So you can uh, see that this one's going to Amazon, right? To the Amazon farm. And that's the name of the server. And this is my public IP address. So every flow that's gonna come out of my network actually is gonna be from my public router out to some site. So was, I do a NAT translation from my house 
inside network to the outside network. And then you'll see different uh, information like the types of protocols that I'll be doing. Let's take a look at that. And I'll make it easier in a few seconds here so you can see that. So right here, you'll see different flows that were done. Okay. So that was running a TCP at layer four. And this is the beauty of NTOP NG is the fact that it does the deep packet inspection. And we can actually see the actual protocols and the transport and the actual uh, application that was done inside. Okay. So in this case, the next one I'm going to do, oops, sorry about that. Let's go back to my screen here. Is I'm going to now be a little bit, put a filter on the uh, flow. We'll do this one. And so once again, here's the external interface. And I said, I only want to see from my public eyes. Uh, flows only from that, which will be very similar since I only can show you that. And there's be the output of that. And then finally, last piece of uh, command line I'm going to show you is this particular one right here. And what I done with this one is I said, show me both interfaces and I want to do a special uh, on using a special flow script that I wrote and it makes it easier for my programming so I don't have to send all the activity data so I'm actually looking at for instance let's take a look at this guy right here you can see it's a TLS from Google between my house it's TCP protocol you can see how many bytes are the, the source port the destination and you can obviously we know that 443 is the default HTTPS uh, uh, port. Okay. So what I'd like to do next, I want to move to now show you show and tell. Um, is there are there any questions before I move from the command line to put this down? So I assume that from the since no one's talking that there's there's no hand raising. I don't know how this works. <laughs> but uh I'll move on then. Okay, NST. This is the NST WUI. So all behind the scenes, I just showed you the behind the scenes, how you do the data acquisition. Uh, NST, as I said, is a web-based front end to all the major um, um, open source networking tools that you're familiar with, Wireshark or Nmap, Ntop, Etherape, all those. And that's all been integrated into one common uh, interface. So NST has a lot of special features. So you're in the Chrome browser. And at any point, you have a LAN or an IP address. You can do different things. So here's LAN 0. OK. When you bring that up, you'll see information about the, the interface. Uh, you know that what its addresses are. You can bring up, take down the interfaces. You can look at connection details and things like that. Into so NST has the ability when you have a network entity that I can describe or has description, I will give you the ability to work with that at any point. So today we're going to focus on uh, monitors of the NTOP NG management. So this is my interface to a running NTOP NG. You can start it from the command line or you can do it from the WUI. I'm going to shut it down and show you. So this is the one we've been using. I'm going to shut it down right now. So the way you don't have to do much with when you're in the WUI, you just got to click. So here's your choices that I have given to one to set up NTOP NG. You, I have always have for any web user interface page or NST WUI page, a little detail a description of what it is that you're doing. On my particular uh, host, I have, you can choose which interfaces that you want to have NTOP NG monitor. The LAN zero is the interface for my uh, network. I also have a dual NIC on this, so I have uh, three interfaces. This is Netmon zero and Netmon one. By the way, these names are very specific that I can change 
I do not like the esoteric names that come from default from any of the Linux distributions. So I have the ability with uh, a script called NST net config that I can translate the names to something much more specific. So LAN zero makes sense to me and a netmon zero and there's a netmon one. Um, and if once you, once again, you can click on any of these and you'll see that uh, you can get the interface information. So you know that, and it's a real time, it's running Ajax in the back end. So you can see that this updates accordingly every, I think it's every four or five seconds here. Let's see, it's five seconds. It tells you your speed, your interface, and things like that. I have, with the script that I told you about, I put the interface in what I call a stealth mode. To me, a stealth mode is means there's no binding IP address or IPv6 address on the interface. And that allows you just to be out there monitoring whatever traffic is seen on the interface and there's uh, there's no binding IP address. So when you start up NTOP NG, you pick the interfaces. In my case, I'm going to choose two. What you want your port to be, I since I use HTTPS and uses it also uses the self-signed certificate of the uh, N NST web user, user interface. I have what my local interfaces are since I'm using two interfaces in this case. I always provide that kind of a give you a when the page is resolved, I give you the uh, a starting point of which guys you can click on here. If you want DNS resolution, I always like that or not. And these are all what I'm doing right here is just providing uh, command line arguments to a configuration file that NTOPNG is going to be using. When you want flow alert detection, I like to have it on. And then if you want to start or clear out your ResDes database, so, so the NTOPNG uses a high performance uh, database. It's a key value type of uh, database. And if you wanted to do factory reset, you can have the ability. You can also set your password if you would like to do that. You can, that's the startup. You can set up if you want to have your own sub protocols. So a nice thing that uh, is in NTOP NG is you can actually, if you have a very, uh, a non-standard protocol, you could actually click on this and customize it with this kind of a thing. So here's, for instance, I do uh, aircraft surveillance too, but I know that this port, which is non-standard port, is for flight radar 24 and that would show up. So let's actually, let's enable that. So let's save and return. So you can edit those things, okay? And so this is how you start up NTOP NG. So out of the box, if you had uh, got NST and you wanted to just look at traffic on your local network, all you would have to do is fill in these simple boxes and just start it up. First thing it does is starts up a res, the back end res database, uh, starting the NTOP NG service, and then you ch it's making sure your password is set, and then you're done. You can return here, and now we're up and running. So you'll see the two interfaces that we chose to monitor, and I have a, a, a very simple, another uh, curl, uh, request a data acquisition for just information about what NTOP is uh, seeing. It has two interfaces, how many bytes in the f in the actual <coughs> alerts that are occurring. I use system D to manage this, and you can see we have two processes. We have a res des database running and an NTOP NG instance running. So this is my common uh, service control. And then you get right to some of the uh, components that I was talking about. This is a geolocation piece. So you can produce the world maps, which I'll show you right here. So I'm just running very, so out of, right now, since I've been running NTOP NG for the last few minutes, you are producing this map right here, which uh, is actually tells you when you, everything on NST is, uh, has hyper uh, has uh, tooltips built in, so you can see that I 
picked up 300 hosts already and geolocated uh, 92 and not 48, 448. You can do a KLM, which I showed you. You can produce the WebGL. I'm gonna, not going to show you those right now. So there's always information section with NST. So this is just showing you the NTOP and the res behind the scenes, the process that's running. Also, some of its uh, actual resource usage with something we call PS leaks. And then I have some dumps just to make sure it's working. So here's the dump of the res database. So this is all the information that is being used right now by this running instance of NTOP NG. So it's the, some of the internals. Uh, here's an example of looking at the uh, stats for the, that's the top piece that's running the process monitor. Looking at just a dump of your IPs, these are all the IPs. Here's one that looks, that dumps the NDPI protocols that are available. So these are all the possible protocols for the deep packet inspection that you can get out of uh, NTOP NG. And then here's the top 10 flows. Okay. I have a section on PF ring, so I also provide PF ring support in NTOP NG. Uh, in, if there's a new kernel, which I update periodically, you would have to go through these steps or it can be done automatically. So I give you that ability, tell you simple steps that you would need to do to get your uh, the PF ring interface to work with it. Okay. So there's your version and a short help. Okay, so let's get to showing you some of the different ways that I've worked with NTOP NG over the years. And I like to do it visually. So um, before I get to that here, let me make sure I've got to get rid of some of these tabs so I don't get confused here. Okay. This particular tab gets you right to the front end to NTOP NG web interface. So let's put this in. So if you're familiar, obviously, if you used NTOP, you're familiar with this front end and all its glory. Okay. Get rid of this, this one. The tab to the right is how I've done the geolocation with NTOP NG. Turn this off. So let me come out from the map so you know where you are in the world. So right now, I'm monitoring the dirty side of my interface network. And also, these are the um, actual hosts that are occurring on a Google map. But if you click on one, you actually get the host information, you get its location, and you get different pieces of uh, deep packet inspection. All right. So I'm going to focus where I live up in Albany, New York here. And I've enhanced Google significantly. I have all these tools that I use for um, for my work when I do geolocation work. And I can show you that if you're interested in here. So let me go and come back here to about here. Now I have a smart house at my house. And the Amazon farm or the Google Cloud platform is commonly used. <laughs> So this is showing you host information geolocated. Every time this little green dot up here blinks, I did a data acquisition. So it's every 10 seconds, I think I'm doing it right now. And you can change that with your update rates. You have a whole sort of information that you can change up here. So I'm just gonna close that. So these are the actual hosts that were couldn't be geolocated and most of them are IPv6. Out of the last query, these are the hosts that could be geolocated. Okay. And then over time, this is the ones that are plotted. So you have all this information here of sites that it found. Close that out. So what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to now layer on top of this 
map the actual flows that are occurring. Okay, so let's zoom out again. Now, when I can't geolocate, when I can't geolocate, I have to put it someplace so it's on the country. So you'll see this one right here that has a lot of hosts in the center because I couldn't geolocate, but I knew it was the US IP. You have an interesting one that are going over to here and here. So when you click on the map, you saw the, uh, I mean, on click on a host, you actually saw some protocols, but it depends on the, how NTOP NG is either flushing out a flow or not. So these are the flows that are occurring here right now. So let's go, now I'm gonna go back to zoom in where I was. Actually, let me do it this way. Just go back. Okay, now I wanna show you a particular, this is nice. This, that you see the flows and the the big the brighter the blue the more throughput and they fade out if anybody's familiar with a tool called etherate this is where I got the idea of doing this so in time as they fade out but there's a lot of hosts on top of it if I click on this host I know this one particular see there's this 46 hosts at this and what I find fascinating what I can do is I'm gonna take this and now I'm gonna hit a key and I'm gonna spread these out Okay, so you're actually seeing all the hosts that were at that one point. So I can't show you, but what I've done now is this is showing you the Amazon Web Farm access from my house and all how it does the load balancing. So right here, if I well, let me just find one that's on here, so you can see it's HTTP to there. This one, um, let me get some something going on here. Oh, this one right here. So you can see it's Amazon, right? So I know that that's the Amazon web farm. So then what, what one can do now is you can actually put filters, right? So if I want to uh, put a filter on this, I want to now only look at Amazon traffic. Uh, so here you go in terms of just what I did I filtered it out right now so you can see up on top it's only Amazon and then uh, let me just go to a site I think sometimes when I go to some websites let's go to CNN here that'll bring some traffic up here go back to the NTAP NG and let me go back to the filter and turn this off you can see that uh, this, these are different types of actual traffic that I filtered on. So right now there is no, there's none. So back to the filter, close that out. And we're now only looking at the traffic from uh, the protocols. Oh, I have a host filter on it. So you can see how I filtered out just for one host. Remember I showed you with the command line how you can do that. So I'm going to now clear that out and now you'll just go back to here and you can see this. So let's look at next thing I wanted to show you is let's pick one if I can ping it. So now I have the tools I can, I'm going to see if I can ping this guy right here. That one won't ping. Let me go find another one here. I wanted to show you how the, uh, let's see if I can ping this guy. It's not going to be pingable either. <laughs> of course, some of these, you know, they turn off the, um, they turn off the um, ability to do ICMP. So let's see here. I can't find one now. Of course, if you just bear with me, I'll just see if I can find another one here. Let's try this guy. Let's see if I can ping him. Let's clear this. There you go. So now let's edit him. So you can see I'm using tools that you may, I'm not really explaining to you, but how I've integrated all sorts of utility tools into, um, into um, <clears throat> the actual hosts that are discovered from NSD WUI or from the NSD box. 
So in this case here, last protocol was ICMP, right? So I just pinged him. So that was the ping that I just did here. So Simone, I have, I'm gonna show you one more thing here. I, and then we'll open it up for discussion, but I'll keep going. But I, I just wanted to know on time how I'm doing. Yes, yes, please, Ron, show it. Okay, okay, good. All right, so this is the host. We can close that down. And this is, oh, one more thing on the host. That's important that I show you this right here. So let's get rid of this. Let's go back to the maps. So when you have a host here, let's expand this again right here. Let's say I'm very interested in the flow to this guy right here. You can actually just click on uh, the NTOP flows and it'll go right to, and to, it integrates into the NTOP NNG in, interface. And then if you want to drill down even more for that host, then you're into the world of NTOP NG's web, which is fabulous and all the different details that you can have. So I didn't want to recreate this information. I just wanted you to have a front end visually. So when you're solving a network computing problem, a lot of times is why do you have a flow to these sites? What's going on there? Then you can drill down. So I can just pick a flow like to this guy right here. I say, what the heck is going on? And there's all the flows associated with that between my external interface inside. So that's a nice integration between two, you know, between NTUP and NST in this case, right? So I wanted to show you that, okay, before I got off of this. Then the last thing I think I wanted to show you is another piece, and that is in protocol analyzer. So I put a front end to Wireshark, either a single tap or a multi-tap interface. I'm not going to get into how this is actually works, but I did a capture uh, before we started here. And if I do a new decode, these are specialized decodes. I'm going to show you a tool that it's in DPI reader. And the nice thing about it is it takes a value of a PCAP file that I captured. And then it quickly goes through and it does the deep packet inspection. For in this particular case, these are all the protocols and the packets and bytes. So I find this a very useful tool. And then one can do after that is if you put a little bit of a, a front end, like a graph in front of that, and you got a very nice, after you do a capture, a media capture, and I'll try to do one right after this. This is showing you packets, right? You can see the packets that are happened in this particular capture. You have the duo. I was actually on a call with my partner, Paul Blankenbaker, who uh, I have worked with on NST. He's my partner. Google, and then you have, here's some mail post office protocol, you have Apple stuff, Google Docs, all the different protocols. You have, so that's packets. You have the ability to show bytes, and you have the ability to show flows, okay, to the different things. So let's set one up here. Maybe we can see the traffic actually from the teams. Let's see that. So I'll show you real quick how this works. You gotta start a capture. We're going to do a long capture right here in a monitor so on net zero. So I'm doing, I'm actually running, letting this all automated. I'm running this dump cap behind the scenes on my public uh, facing through that tap, netmon zero, and I'm just collecting data. So I'm going to terminate it now. And then I got to do a new decode and I'm going to do it packet inspection and I guess it's teams use Skype Simone probably does <laughs> so that's what you how you recorded it right yeah. so that's how that is done right there and you can see that my presentation is actually shown up as 54 percent of those packets because obviously I'm sharing packets to everybody out in the world here okay. so maybe it's a good time here Simone, if there's questions that we can ask the uh, the group here, if they have questions on anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll listen, because there's a lot of information. Yeah, if any one of you have questions, I mean, can raise a hand or just 
turn on the mic and just ask a question. So feel free to do that. So it seems no one has questions. So Ron, if you want to wrap up the presentation. Sure, let's do that. So once again, NST, let's talk a little bit about this. It's been 2003 to 2020. Uh, you can go to the website here. It's uh, networksecuritytoolkit.org. We try to release the software once a year now. Uh, we're on version 32. We're in lockstep with Fedora. So it's a Fedora based distribution here. And some of the features that we've done, we show you that on this website here. Uh, some of the uh, actual geolocation um, work, you could have, obviously you can see there's NTOP NG. And on top from the previous versions, there's the uh, active flows, active connections. Even with Snort, we actually have intrusion detection stuff. You have uh, trace routing, wireless types of work. And uh, also, I work with the, um, another thing is with the, if anybody's played with SCAPI in a multi-trace route. So there's another ways that tools. So NST has the best of breed of all the these types of tools integrated into the common web user interface, and uh, that's a, it's freely available on the on the uh, as an open source uh, distribution. And I think that at this point, Simone, I'm very pleased with uh, all the things that I wanted to say. And once again, if there's any questions or people can always uh, reach out to me via the uh, VR Pro site, uh, which is out there. And uh, you can send emails based on that to the support. So there's a uh, support section here or at SourceForge. Let's see here. So you can contact us here on the support channel. Yeah, yeah, so thank you very much, Ron, for this uh, very informative webinar today. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure for us to see that uh, our software is also integrated in other tools to add value to them because I mean, it's, it's a, a bit our philosophy to build a software that is extensible and easily usable by other people as well. And I would also like to thank you for your suggestions and your contributions to the code base of NTOPNG, especially for the REST API contributions. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, and as you've seen in this presentation, I mean, Ron has also not only contributed to the REST API of NTOPNG, but it has also extended and open G with other custom REST API. I mean, in the beginning of this presentation, he showed us new endpoints called NST underscore something. So this means that Ron not only contributed to the REST API of NTOPNG, but it also created his own REST APIs to pull data out of NTOPNG and feed that data to NST and create uh, nice uh, views like as, as the geolocation one that we have seen. So once again, Ron, thanks for your time. Thanks for Thank your you. presentation. And if any of you have questions now or later, I mean, you can feel free to drop us an email, me or Ron or Luca. Or, I mean, we'll be happy to respond and connect you to the right person. Yeah, once more. Thank you, Ron, and thanks anyone for attending. Thank you. Bye-bye.